Thinking of external SSD storage for your computer? How fast does it need to be? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So if you watch my channel, you know I do a ton of different videos on all these external SSD drives. I'm a Mac channel, but I do a lot of stuff for external storage, just like the one I did recently. I recently did one that was up to 2,850 megabytes per second on the reads and writes, and that was a Thunderbolt 4 enclosure. I built that, and I showed you guys how to do that, so check that video out. And then I just did this one right here, I think the last video, actually. This is a Dual Bay M.2 NVMe enclosure right here. You can put two SSDs in here. And this thing was about 900 megabytes per second, which I thought was fast. And that's what we're going to talk about today. How fast of storage do you actually need? Let's kind of dig into it. All right, so after I made this video last week, or a couple days ago actually, on this device, I got a lot of comments, not a ton, but a lot of comments of people saying, oh, 900 megabytes per second is not that fast. 900 megabytes per second, this guy must be getting paid by this company to say that. He's crazy, that's super slow storage, right? First of all, I hate to burst their bubble, but I'm not getting paid by anybody, right? I basically find different products out there that I like to review. If they are, I'll put up you know, something up here saying it's a paid promotion. It might be in the future, but right now I just find cool devices and I talk about them. I do product showcases. I don't have them long enough to do complete reviews of them, but I do like to talk about if I like them initially or not. And this is one that I just did right here, a really cool device, 900 megabytes per second. And people are telling me that I'm just getting paid to say that because it's just super slow. All right, so what I wanted to do in this video is address what the people are saying and then give you some real world examples and then ask some questions at the end. This is more of a learning experience for myself and also, you know, how fast is this thing? Is it really fast enough for most of the people out there, right? So we all know this is a 10 gigabit per second enclosure. That basically means you divide bytes by bits and it, you divide it by eight. So these things are theoretically capable of about 1250 megabytes per second, no matter what. That's just all this thing can do at the fastest scenario. Now, most of these, though, because of overhead and stuff like that, can only get between like 600 and 900 megabytes per second. And this one was on the higher end of that, so it gets around 900 megabytes per second. So this one overall wasn't too bad at all. And then a few weeks ago, or about a couple months ago, I did the Thunderbolt 4 enclosure, and I was getting 2,850 megabytes per second, three times the speed of this, right? And uh, obviously, again, that's a Thunderbolt 4 enclosure, 40 gigabits per second, divide it by eight. So theoretically, that can get up to 5,000 megabytes per second on the reads and writes, but you'll never see anything close to that. And all my experience, I've looked at, you know, I've done a lot of different reviews, I've talked to a lot of different people, around 3,000 megabytes per second on external storage on a Thunderbolt 4 enclosure is about what you can get. Maybe a little bit higher with certain drives, maybe a little less with certain drives, but around 2,800 to 3,000 is what they consider ultra fast external storage right now. But do you need that? That's the question, and that's what we're going to break down. All right, just don't forget, too, this is the funny part. I mean, just not too long ago, we were using spinning drives, right? And then we went up to three and a, or two and a half inch SSD drives. Those are about 450 megabytes per second, about half the speed of this one right here, half the speed of this, all right? People are saying this is slow. And nobody had any problems with those backing up data, doing pretty much anything they wanted to do. In fact, I work in a data center, and a lot of the servers are still running on spinning drives, 15K, and they're also run on basically SATA, uh, just two and a half inch drives as well about four to 500 megabytes per second. It's not slow enough for them, or it's not too slow for them. So what are we talking here? Is this really too slow? Well, let's talk about it for a little bit. Look at my screen over here. Here's one of those most common Samsung T5. This is way too expensive for this, but because it's older. But the, everyone uses this. This is like one of the number one selling external enclosures, right? This is 540 megabytes per second, and people love this thing, all right? Some of the newer ones, like the T7, look at it right here, 69 bucks. This is going to be, let's just, let's just say, up to 10,500 or 10,050 megabytes per second, so slightly faster than that one, right? But if you really go to all the way down to the bottom, if I can even find it, you start reading comments and stuff, like this person says, I copy this, I'm only getting 250 megabytes per second, I'm only, and I've seen other ones, I'm only getting 500 megabytes per second. So those conclusions don't even get the real speeds that they're even saying up to. You have to have perfect conditions, and a lot of times they don't even get close to that, all right? And here's another example over here. This is the SanDisk Extreme. This again says up to 1050 megabytes per second, just slightly faster than that one down there. But if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can basically go through the reviews and stuff, and it's gonna tell you that people are getting only up to like 800, 750, somewhere in that range. They're not getting the full 1050. And even so, that would only be slightly faster than this anyway. And then finally over here, you know, just another example, let me just see here. This is this one here is a SanDisk one, and that's only 800 megabytes per second, and that's slower than this one right here. So it's gonna be slower than that, but people give this thing 5,000 reviews, 4.6 out of 5, people love it. It's fast enough for almost everybody, right? Why is that? 
All right, so what does 900 megabytes per second mean on a device like this? It basically means, you know, in a nutshell, that you can, it takes about 1.1 seconds estimated to move one gigabyte of data, right? So if you have, you know, let's just say I did a video editing project and I have 25 gigabytes of data. That's all my files, my video 4K files, all my pictures, everything like that. That's a pretty substantial amount of data, 25 gigabytes. It means basically that if I ran 25 gigabytes on this, it would take about 28 seconds to move all that data onto this drive. Only 28 seconds. So there it is, it's super fast, right? My whole project that I do for a day for video editing at 4K would take only 28 seconds to move the data. So again, let's talk about the faster ones in a second, but that's pretty fast, right? I mean, realistically, 28 seconds, you can't even really get up and do much in that time. You can't even, you know, you might be able to pet the dog or something, or maybe you can't even go get a cup of coffee, to be honest with you. So it's really, really fast. All right, so let's look over at my screen here. This is gonna be a black magic. You can see it right here. This lists the speed of the drive that I showed over here. And if you look down here, it says it's good for, you know, 4K editing for sure up to 8k editing so here's the video editing you know for what is it you know 4k at 60 even it's all checked in there this, this thing is fast enough to do that all right so even 8k looking in here even 8k down here it's even fast enough to, to basically stream that if you wanted to or even do some video editing in 4k for sure so based off of that we're still not running any problems all right this thing is just just gonna be really fast I mean it's overall it's gonna be more than what people need but let's keep going all right, so people always, all the comments that kept coming back to me, and there were a lot of different comments saying, I'm crazy, this is too slow, you need 2,850 megabytes per second. Well, let's go to that drive that is 2,850 megabytes per second that I built myself. It's a lot more expensive, number one. It runs a lot hotter, number two. And it would take 10 seconds to move that same 25 gigabytes as it would take this one right here, about 28 seconds. So we're talking, what is that, a difference of about 18 seconds, all right? Now, 18 seconds in the scheme of my whole world and my whole life, is that I, I sometimes get dazed out. I'm sitting looking at the wall for a minute straight sometimes. 18 seconds to me is almost nothing, all right? So this is where we run into this issue where a lot of people see these speeds. They sit back and they say, well, I see that Apple's computers now are coming out at a certain speed, right? I see that they're all anywhere from 15 to 1800 all the way up to like 6,000 megabytes per second on internal disk. So I need that, Why? You know, I need that for sure. You, this disk is too slow. You shouldn't be offering that. You're, you're kind of switch baiting people. You're, you're, you're getting paid by them to say it. No, I'm not. I'm, I mean, look at the difference here. I mean, I don't do stuff. People that do stuff that would require that kind of speed are few and far between. I would argue that 95% of people would be perfectly happy with this drive. They can do video editing on this drive. They can actually collect it to a Mac like this and video edit off this drive. It would have no stuttering, no, no problems at all. You could do file transfers on this drive. You could do anything you want on this drive. And I want justification for why you need 2,850 megabytes per second, all right, from the people that are out there telling me that I'm crazy for recommending something that's 900. Now, I understand there's things out there. I had a couple people that were actually honest, a few of them, and they came back and said, I do you know, X code stuff and it helps a little bit with the faster stuff. And I understand, I wanna learn. I wanna learn from everybody else. I understand there's channels out there like Linus Tech Tips as well. And I'm guessing you're not one of those channels. I mean, there's people that really do need very, very fast storage because of the fact that they have super huge workloads. They work for corporate America as far as you know, movie production and stuff where it's gonna save them a lot of money because time is money. But the most of us, I mean, 95% of us can wait that 13 or 15 seconds and it's all about I don't know what I think it's all in people's heads as far as how fast this stuff takes I mean again 25 gigabytes of data think how often you actually do transfer that all at once right very few people do that quite often obviously you do it sometimes but not all the time and even if you're doing a big backup or something it's usually incremental I mean as far as the backups after the first one so it's gonna be a few seconds difference and you're talking a few seconds here between the 900 megabyte per second one and the, you know the other obviously device that's a lot faster when you get even smaller than 25 gigabyte files. So at the end of the day, is this fast enough for everybody out there, 900 megabytes per second? Yes, I think, well not everybody, again, I said 95% of the people. And I'm guessing most of the people that are yelling at me that it's too slow, it's good enough for them as well. I mean, everyone's kind of infatuated with everything getting faster and faster and faster. Mac needs, I mean, Mac says that this is 25% thinner, the screen's 25% bigger, this is 50% uh, faster, the disks are now 6,000 megabytes per second. People, you know, obviously get that in their head and they think, oh, 900 megabytes per second down here, it's not worth it, right? It's not worth my money, it's too slow. It's not. Everything's moving so fast in this world that it just, people don't have time to even sit and think of anything, right? Maybe it's good that it takes an extra 10 seconds or 15 seconds and you can actually pet the dog or look out the window and see some trees instead of sitting, staring at your screen all day. I mean, at the end of the day, 
these things are fast is what I'm saying. So if you're thinking about buying external storage and you're kind of stuck between buying something like this for 900, you know, this is 900 megabytes per second, and you can get, I showed you how on my last video, you can get four terabytes for under 500 bucks. You can get two terabytes for like 250, or four terabytes, I'm sorry, for about 250, eight terabytes for under 500 bucks. Add it to a Mac and you'll have extremely fast eight terabytes of storage on this Mac over here. So you can do stuff like that with this kind of stuff. If you go to Thunderbolt, you're gonna be paying a lot more for that. And you usually just don't need it at the end of the day. It's better just to take a step back and see what your needs are individually, all right? I mean, I know people think they need it, but nobody from that whole group that yelled at me has told me why they specifically need it and gave me specific use cases. I know they're out there because I know some of them, obviously, like I told you before. There are reasons why people need that storage sometimes. I even work in a data center and I know all the ins and outs of all that stuff, right? But at the end of the day, I want people to give me real examples and just tell me, like, what are the use cases for it? Why do you need 2,800 megabytes per second instead of 900? I'll be fair, I answer all the comments. And for everything I do here, I have a whole YouTube channel. I work in a data center. I have tons of data backups. I do pictures of video editing, 4K. Never done 6 or 8K, maybe in the future. But this thing here works just fine for that. And it's gonna work just fine for you as well. But just stick with the true and tried stuff like these. They usually run cooler. There's usually, you know, less problems with heating, obviously, longevity. These are better usually, and, uh, you know, they're going to be less expensive. There's a lot of advantages to those type of systems over the Thunderbolt enclosures as well. And at the end of the day, some people even buy the Thunderbolt enclosures. They don't even have the right ports for them, and they end up getting slower than this. So let's wrap this up. I just wanted to kind of address this all in a video. I hope it didn't bore you too much, but if you're thinking about buying external storage, that's fast enough. And I would even argue 500 megabytes per second is fast enough for 95% of the people, and I'm sticking to it. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.